Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So typically we, we could just simply call this as reference temperature it does not have to be 298 and as an example um, I have written a couple of things here one is the atomic hydrogen formation reaction. So we noted that uh, H2 is like the um, reference element for H and therefore uh, half H2 giving H is uh, uh, the formation reaction for atomic hydrogen. And uh, so the delta H F naught 298 for H. So the, you look at the notation here. So in fact, you could you could uh, uh, improve on the notation by saying 298 comma uh, script M I on the subscript there, where script M I refers to the species for which you're looking at the formation standard heat of formation. So here uh, for uh, the formation reaction of atomic hydrogen you get a number that that looks like this but on the other hand if you now look at the formation reaction for the uh, high H2 molecule um, the formation reaction is H2 gives H2 and obviously you are now having no change across this reaction therefore it makes sense for us to take the uh, standard heat standard heat of formation as 0. In the last class one of the questions that uh, came about for a definition of a heat of reaction uh, and uh, more so for the formation reaction was if you now take the initial state uh, at a certain pressure and temperature and then um, you now wait until you come, come back to the same pressure and temperature for the final state and look at the heat that has been removed or added to the system during this process um, what about the expansion work. Okay, because we now keep the pressure constant that means we could allow for the volume to change and there will be a, a pressure uh, work that the uh, system does because of the volume change that, that is allowed. Uh, so what we have to recognize now is uh, note that all heats or enthalpies. that means and it is not for nothing that we chose a symbol h that would imply that the heat is is an enthalpy or or the the reason why h is associated the symbol h is associated with enthalpy is looking at it the other way it's actually the a heat okay so this is this is to say all the heats that we are looking at are not internal energies but enthalpies so these are enthalpies that means that is they include the expansion work all right. So for example if you now say uh, suppose suppose we now have a a container and a piston uh, and a weight W weight W indicates constant pressure right and uh, suppose initially uh, we have uh, a mixture of H2 and uh, half mole of oxygen molecule and uh, suppose we now have a heat interaction across the system boundary and uh, finally we now have a different volume right at which uh, you now get a H2O for the final. So here we have a T equals 298K P equals uh, 1 bar and uh, here we have two e, uh, T equals 298K P equals 1 bar right. So uh, this is the convention that we use 
the convention is uh, so heat heat transfer is positive positive uh, when when into the vessel so positive when into the vessel right so we now take q to be positive if it is going inside and uh, so for, for uh, here uh, here as in, in this example where we are taking a h2 and half O2 initially and then becomes h2o um, the the heat is liberated liberated that is uh, um, leaving the system leaving the vessel leaving out of the vessel okay and uh, that is uh, that is we will we'll also try to now make it like QP QP refers to the, the subscript P here for the Q refers to the heat heat transfer at constant pressure right so that is uh, uh, QP equal to negative 240 kilojoules per mole right so when you are saying per mole it is actually per mole of what is formed so in this case it is one mole of atomic hydrogen that is formed uh, incurring uh, 217.999 kilojoules uh, here we are looking at one mole of water that is formed um, liberating uh, 240 kilojoules per mole right so uh, this is this means negative negative means exothermic right positive means endothermic and uh, so what is happening here is um, first law of uh, thermodynamics applied to the system um, means that a delta E which is the internal energy change is equal to QP minus the work done. It's a, you could write it the other way that is the heat is equal to delta E plus the work done or uh, delta E is equal to QP minus the work done and uh, this means uh, E2 minus E1 is equal to QP uh, minus P times let us say uh, V2 minus V1 or, uh, or you can also now rearrange things so you can say uh, E2 take take this pv2 to the uh, to the left hand side uh, so it becomes a plus pv2 and then you have a minus of minus pv1 so you have a plus pv1 on the uh, right hand side which uh, can be taken to the left hand side uh, becomes you now try to group it with uh, uh, e1 with a negative sign that is equal to qp so from here you can see that this is actually h2 minus h1 equal to qp that is equal to the delta h so this is this is actually for any um, heat of formation or any I am sorry any heat of reaction okay so for what whatever you mean by heat of reaction as defined with uh, respect to having a constant pressure and temperature at which you start out and coming back to the same temperature and pressure in the end will basically give rise to this because we now keep the pressure constant right and uh, you get back to this uh, thing. So effectively what it means is the heat that you are looking at is essentially an enthalpy right so that is what you are or, 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 or an enthalpy change in the, in the reaction. In the case of uh, heats of formation you will find that you are looking at reference, reference elements to start with okay which are assigned a 0 heat of formation therefore you can directly say the heat of formation of uh, of a uh, what should I say uh, of, of any 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 uh, species is essentially its enthalpy okay because it is not really an enthalpy change anymore because it is changing from 0 0 for the reference element all right therefore uh, you can simply say that 
all heats are enthalpies right. Um, now in the case of a constant volume process of course in the case of a constant volume process um, we will have E2 minus E1 equal to QE which means we, we do not keep the pressure fixed the pressure will vary but the volume will be fixed okay. So I will, I will leave it to you to actually find out whether QV will always be greater than QP or not okay that is something that you can try to find out for yourself and um, we will also look at some puzzles in the end between QE and QP um, that I will try to point out uh, if, if we get some time um, but let us just continue at the moment. Okay and uh, the other point I wanted to make is uh, uh, constant typically most uh, uh, most um, experiences or with uh, constant pressure right example or uh, let us say gas turbine rockets uh, stows etc fairly different ones like gas turbine and rocket may be like aerospace but stows is not necessarily aerospace furnaces also all these things you typically have a constant pressure situation uh, in, in things like um, piston engines the pressure keeps the, 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 the pressure keeps varying the volume keeps changing okay so it is neither constant pressure not, not constant volume but um, uh, let us let us not bother about it at the moment. Uh, for many many applications constant pressure combustion is a good approximation okay. The other thing is uh, so standard tables now standard uh, tables uh, such as uh, uh, what is called as the Janaf, uh, Janaf thermochemical tables uh, catalog or uh, give simply you can say simply simply give delta hf naught 298 for uh, many species in fact this tells you why we need to actually have a standard standard heat deformation okay so it's possible now if you standardize the conditions at which you want to catalog or tabulate the uh, heat deformation then um, it is possible for you to actually have uh, tables like the Jan of thermochemical tables um, which will give this for many many species okay so it, 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 these are available. So if you now look at uh, the heat that is released QP as essentially a delta H which is uh, nothing but H2 minus H1 right that is what we had here just coming back to that uh, after these notes. So we now have this can be written as then sigma um, i equals 1 to n n i double prime um, let us say hf uh, hf m i at P2 comma T2 minus um, sigma i equals 1 to n um, ni single prime hf mi uh, at P1 comma T1 which is to say you could now consider any process where we started out with certain pressure P1 and T1 does not have to be standard okay and uh, you now go through the process of the reaction to com get completed and you know you now reach a different state P2 and T2 which has got nothing to do with the standard all right. If that is the case then we note that we are not using the standard heat of formation here okay we are saying whatever is the heat of formation of all the species 
that are involved in the reaction taking care that if you if ni double prime were 0 that means it is not really a product okay uh, I'm sorry if ni double prime were yeah that's correct if ni double prime were 0 then it is not a product if ni single prime were 0 then it is not a reactant so that will take care of that so we essentially can sum over all the heats of formation uh, not the standard heat of formation but heats of formation at certain pressure and temperature that is for the products and minus the heats of formation um, for the reactants. So effectively this is like for the products and this is for the reactants. I have changed notation a little bit here for you and I am going to explain this further on we are now beginning to use small h okay because particularly because this is this is associated with per unit mole and you multiply by the number of moles okay. So in a, in, 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 a, in some sense you can now call this as a uh, molar specific enthalpy that means you are talking about it as a per unit mole okay. Of course we have been talking about having this as per mole as well okay but this is the standard heat that we are looking at this is not the standard heat of formation yet okay. I do not know if this makes sense right away if, if, if I now write it like this I am I am actually trying to do something a little bit circuitous in the sense if I have a reaction that is going on let us suppose that I have uh, methane plus oxygen gives carbon dioxide and water let us suppose that that is the reaction that we are looking at now we are looking at here the formation uh, heat of formation of carbon dioxide and heat of formation of um, uh, water here we are looking at heat of formation of methane and heat of formation of oxygen okay. Now we know that the standard heat of formation of oxygen is 0 and the heat of the, the formation reaction for methane for example would be like carbon at solid form plus hydrogen gives you to 2 hydrogen gives CH4 that is a reaction that we have to go through for the heats of the, the, the uh, uh, formation reactions for carbon dioxide and water are like um, uh, C plus O2 gives CO2 and uh, uh, H2 plus half O2 gives H2O and so on those are not the reactions that we are finally looking at right. So we are, we, are, we are finally looking at CH4 plus O2 gives CO2 plus H2O. So why did we actually have to get into formation enthalpies? So essentially what it means is we are beginning a hypothetical process in our minds while we are writing this and I want you to um, sort of get, get to understand that which is let us suppose that you started out with some reactants in this case in this example it is hydrogen and oxygen or the other example that I mentioned is methane and oxygen what it means is and then they are at some pressure and temperature okay. So what we are really basically saying when you are including the heats of formation is we are now going through un, unbonding the bonds okay. So CH4 we now want to actually impart some heat to the system to form C and H2 which are the formation constituents that is the reference elements O2 is a reference element already okay as far as the and then we now have the reference elements. We now regroup the reference elements so we now have C H2 and O2 these are the reference elements with which you could now form your carbon dioxide and water. So it is sort of like you got the reactants you now unpack, unpack the or, or uh, just debond them and then get back the reference elements that means you have exchanged some heat in this process keep that as an account okay and then get the reference elements to form the products that you are looking for. All right, and you will now get some heat out so minus the heat that is supplied is the net heat that you are going to get. So you are going through a hypothetical reaction in your mind through a reverse formation reaction for the reactants to form the reference elements and then a formation a set of formation reactions for the products to, to get some he, a heat transaction in both these steps okay and then you are looking at the net heat transfer to get you this keep QP this is this is as it is beginning to get you into some hypothetical uh, reactions that are not happening at all okay okay 
the next step for us is, so here uh, our HF, small HF MI as I said was specific molar enthalpy. enthalpy at uh, any P and T okay in this case it is P1 and T1 in this case it is P2 and T2 okay. So here we can now write we now write HF MI at a, at a certain temperature and note that I am basically writing it only as a function of temperature why because we are assuming ideal gases okay and because we are assuming an ideal gas which is thermally perfect we expect that the enthalpy uh, the heat is now shown to be an enthalpy and the enthalpy should be only a function of temperature okay. We can now write this as delta H of naught 298 of this species plus a HF MI at T minus HF not 298 MI. If you do not like 298 you can replace this by T ref any reference temperature that you want but you should look for standard tables that give you these things uh, at that temperature that you are looking at. It is sort of like in this step it is not exactly algebraically adding and subtracting things. You would find that this is showing up in these two places so it is sort of like am, am I adding something and subtracting something in, in some sense yes but there is a physical meaning associated with this. What we are then saying is this is the standard heat of formation right and then this is what is called as the sensible enthalpy. Let me write it in capital letters sensible right that is what is called the sensible enthalpy. So what is going on why are we talking about something called a sensible enthalpy is that because that is the one that makes sense whereas the other one is nonsense. Any ideas? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so algebraically, this is not going to make sense. So, do not worry about it. Okay. So, what you are essentially doing is we are splitting this into two parts. One is what is called as the standard heat deformation that we have been talking about all the time. Okay. And then the next one is what we call as a sensible enthalpy. So I am going to explain to you what these two mean. So here we are writing it in this way primarily from a notation point of view okay. So uh, you do not go ahead and start cancelling things uh, from left hand side. Here no then it, it cannot be. This and this. This, this and last term. This and this. Because you are you could you could you could you could say that you could say that okay you could say that because as I told you this H is not necessarily I mean this is supposed to be like a change okay that's why we have the delta all right but it has changed from zero okay so this is like enthalpy of heat of formation of H minus heat of formation so if you if you can apply this this equation. Um, this equation to the formation rea formation reaction itself what will happen is um, this is um, this is the heat of formation of H minus heat of formation of uh, H2 which is 0 right therefore the change is nothing but the value itself because you are basically taking a value and subtracting 0 from there okay. So you can write it this is, so this is a good question uh, because um, 
it, it also firms up the notation that we are using. So the, the change as well as the value are pretty much the same okay because if you take the value and subtract 0 from this for the reference uh, um, elements heat of formation you get the change so if, so it is essentially the same okay. But what is more important for us from now on is not how we split this it is about what they mean okay. So you are now looking at this particular thing as one term called the sensible enthalpy the other one is called the uh, standard heat deformation which we are now familiar with. The question is um, why, why what is meant by the sensible enthalpy right. So what is sensible about this enthalpy. further yeah. why further because more enthalpy well this any any increase in enthalpy that the sensible enthalpy shows is solely because of a temperature rise okay or in other words when you now talk about enthalpy of a species you can now say this species now has a a basic enthalpy associated with it at standard conditions okay you can take the standard at whatever um, level you want okay your p and standard standard pressure and temperature can be whatever it, it is and then you say you, if the standard heat of formation at this pressure and temperature is this this uh, this is arbitrary the the the, the, the uh, assignment of the pressure the standard pressure and temperature at which the and the standard heat of formation is measured that choice is somewhat arbitrary but at that conditions or those conditions you now have a standard heat of formation that refers to the the energy that is contained in the bonds by itself for simply for, for it to simply remain in that particular molecular combination of atoms at that particular standard temperature and pressure it needs some energy okay that is what this is any further change in the enthalpy of the species from there on is purely by a change in temperature okay. So that means you now stick in a thermometer or a thermocouple or anything and then you measure the temperature you should be able to tell what the sensible enthalpy is. So in other words you, you this, is a, this is a part of the enthalpy that can be sensed by a thermometer or a thermocouple. So since it is sensible by a temperature measuring instrument we call this the sensible enthalpy. So many times when you pretty much recklessly write that the enthalpy is directly proportional to temperature we are always talking about the sensible enthalpy we are not talking about the heat of formation but the heat of formation is hidden okay. So when you are talking about non-reacting fluid mechanics where you are not bothered about chemical reactions and so on you are simply saying you know H is delta H is equal to C P delta T that is because the change in enthalpy is solely coming out of only the change in temperature and therefore you are essentially interested only in the sensible enthalpy and you, you do not even bother about the formation enthalpy because the formation enthalpy is there and the species is not going to change you are not looking at any chemical reactions that will change the species but here we are burdened with the situation where the species is going to change it is going to eat it is going to get if it is a reactant it is going to get depleted if it is a product it is going to get produced right. Therefore we have to now begin to pay attention to the energy of the species itself because it just exists at a standard temperature and pressure and that is by virtue of the bonds and we arbitrarily assign the bonds that are present in like these diatomic molecules like H2 and so on to have 0 energy that is like a datum relative to which a atomic um, species that does not have any bonds actually accrues some energy for it to be remaining in atomic state because it is not naturally existing therefore some energy must have been given to get it get it to that state you see. So that is so e even a, uh, a, a lack of bond in that sense actually has some energy associated with it because of the reference element that we take uh, to, to be what it is. So this is a very very important concept here that, that we are looking at where this could now be catalogued in these tables and then we primarily look at only the change in temperature uh, for the rest of the enthalpy change for any species right. So we, we can we can 
express the sensible enthalpy sensible enthalpy as uh, HF MI of T minus uh, HF um, not let us say T ref uh, MI right equal to integral T ref to T um, CP MI of T dt okay that, that comes from the definition of cp so cp is a partial derivative of enthalpy with respect to temperature and therefore if you want to get the enthalpy back um, then so again you can now think about this like a constant of integration if you are now trying, trying to integrate cp with, with respect to temperature for a uh, calorically perfect gas um, you can write this further as um, HF MI of T minus HF not T ref MI uh, as uh, CP MI T minus T ref. Now I want you to note that for, for the first time we are recognizing that each and every species may have different CP than the other okay. So CP is actually species specific keep this in mind it is going to now haunt you through the rest of your lives if you are doing combustion for the rest of your lives okay. Usually uh, we, are, we are saying T ref is 298.15 K so uh, usually T ref 298.15 K if you want two decimal places accuracy on the temperature there. Uh, so therefore heat of a reaction this is any reaction that we are now looking at let us for example let us say methane oxidation to carbon dioxide and water uh, you can get Cp equals delta H equals H2 minus H1 uh, equal to uh, sigma I equals 1 to N Ni double prime open your curly brackets here and then write delta H of not uh, T ref MI plus HF T2 minus HF not T ref right I uh, take that back a little bit so you could write combined leaf for this for each species MI minus sigma i equals 1 to n n i single prime delta h f not t ref plus uh, h f t 1 minus h f not t ref for species m i right. So you can see that t 2 and t 1 are showing up explicitly when we had these things parenthetically there okay but what about P1 and P2 they do not show up huh? you are looking at ideal gases where the enthalpies are only functions of temperature therefore the, the sensible enthalpy depends on the temperature all right so you can explicitly see T2 and T1 show up here okay but what about pressures do they do we have to bother about them or do you do not we have to bother about them keep bothering about whether we want to bother about them or not okay <laughs> so so we will we'll, we'll just proceed to um, what we want to do which is look at the adiabatic flame temperature we are now ready to look at the adiabatic flame temperature. So what, what, what do we what do we understand by adiabatic flame temperature? Why is it called adiabatic? We still don't know why it's called flame temperature, or do we? 
So in the first class we said the flame is nothing but a reaction zone and we are basically looking at um, any reaction which is happening to start with at P1 and T1 and ending at P2 and T2 and we know how to write an expression for the heat released in this reaction given the heats of formation the standard heats of formation of the species and the sensible enthalpies of the species which are supposed to be tabulated. So the, the tables will actually con con contain a, a um, uh, left hand column of temperature starting from let us say 298.16 and then keep on going up to fairly high temperatures maybe 4000 Kelvin 3000 Kelvin or something like that okay and then for every um, um, row of temperature you will now get the sensible enthalpy for that species right. So you have the sensible enthalpy as a function of temperature or if you do not want to deal with sensible enthalpy uh, you can deal with CPs and the, the way you want to deal with a CP as a function of temperature you can fit in polynomials and then do the integration or if you want to assume a calorically perfect gas you can now consider a CP that is constant over the range of temperature that is that we are interested in right. So you can do all these things so if you are given the um, Ni double primes and the Ni single primes okay and the, the, and the uh, um, heat of formation the standard heat of formation and the sensible enthalpies you could uh, uh, you could in principle find out the QP but what is the situation here what are we looking for what are we trying to find out we are trying to find out the adiabatic flame temperature okay that means we do not know the temperature at which the products will be when the reactants have burned that you get the products okay and we want to actually find out what will be the temperature at attained by the products when they have reacted from the reactants without losing heat to the surroundings at all therefore they get the maximum temperature possible because if, if you lose some heat to the surroundings the products will attain less temperature okay. So not losing heat to the surroundings is what we mean by adiabatic. So if you now have an adiabatic situation then <coughs> you get the maximum temperature that is in principle possible for the products to attain from the reactants yeah. So what would we want to do in this equation what do we what do we know and what do we do not know here yeah. previously given T2 and T1 and P1 and P2 and N1 double prime and N2 double prime and you get the, get the sensible enthalpy from the tables and the heats of formation from the tables you could find QP but here what is what is given and what is not given. Table T1 Ni prime is given uh -huh. and uh, Ni double prime P2 uh, if you assume constant pressure P2 is known uh -huh. and T2 is unknown. T2 is unknown what else is given? Given. Sorry, CP is given. That's fine. That that's been given even before. We have to find T2. No, mm -hmm. T1 we know. So we have to find T2. Is a question, right? So previously we, we were given T2, and we could find QP. Yes. Here, what do we do? We have to find T2. We have to find T2. So what do we, what about QP? QP is taken from zero. QP is taken as 0 so the starting point for us is to take QP is equal to 0 so adiabatic simply means QP equal to 0 right that means H2 is equal to H1 right and when you say H2 equal to H1 the implicit assumption is constant pressure okay so if somebody does not mention constant pressure and talks about adiabatic flame temperature it is implicitly assumed that you are you are basically hearing about the constant pressure process okay. So this refers to this unless you want to explicitly talk about constant volume adiabatic flame temperature then you have to say so okay because without that we are simply going to be equating H2 to H1 if you want to look at constant volume. Um, adiabatic flame temperature what do, what do we want to what do, what do we want to see we want to say QV is equal to 0 
that means we have to be equating E2 to E1 all right. Uh, here we are looking at QP is equal to 0 therefore H2 is equal to H1 implicitly assuming constant constant uh, pressure. So adiabatic flame temperature assumes a constant enthalpy and constant pressure a okay. constant enthalpy given by H2 is equal to H1 and the definitions of heats is essentially having constant pressure in, in, in built in them. So what this means is sigma I equals 1 to N Ni double prime open up the curly brackets and then say delta H of naught T ref plus H of naught at T add okay and H of naught um, T ref all for species Mi equal to sigma I equals 1 to N delta H of the right hand side remains the same as before T1 uh, H of I'm sorry uh, yeah okay that's fine T ref um, Mi okay now for, for a calorically perfect gas of course you can assume Cp uh, as a constant and then again explicitly so now what happens is T add is showing up as what we want it is actually a function of the sensible enthalpy and so what we have to look for is you now know you can, you can find out what the right hand side is okay the right hand side is unknown you know N, um, N, y, Ni single prime um, and uh, you, you know your T1 you can calculate this so what you have to look for is if you were if you knew your Ni double prime okay Ni double prime refers to the composition of the products given the composition of the reactants and we will talk about that soon okay uh, if you are given an I double prime you have to find out so you now, you now have to actually look at one particular temperature for which you could you could now look at the tables for the different species okay at that temperature and uh, find out what this is and then see if it matches with the RHS and then the temperature that you chose for looking at the tables for each and every species in the sensor enthalpy is right if not you start with a different temperature so, so you, can, you can do this a bit iteratively okay or if you now assume a uh, Cp as a function of temperature you will now get polynomial in temperature and you have to solve the uh, solve this polynomial so you, you will now get a temperature explicitly showing up as a polynomial which has to be uh, solved for to, to get, get this temperature if you want to uh, get rid of all these hassles and hopefully that is what you will face in things like exams because you can do this very quickly you assume a calorically perfect gas which means you can simply say Cp Mi of T add minus T reference and here you are going to have Cp Mi T1 minus T reference so T, T adiabatic is actually showing up linearly as, as opposed to a polynomial okay and then, and then you can just rearrange and get your temperature all right okay. So that that's that that's easy for a calorically perfect gas but not otherwise um, so given ni single prime and ni double prime one can find one can find t t derivative from the above equation right okay so sensible enthalpy is also tabulated as I said uh, tabulated in Janov tables um, as a function of temperature these are now available available on the web for uh, typical species that you would be interested in and so on okay now I want to talk about two things here okay and these are the two most important things as far as this is concerned. So we now say this is equal to here because QP is equal to 0 previously we had a negative sign and then uh, the whole thing would be equal to QP but now we have set QP is equal to 0 split this apart so this refers to products this refers to reactants yeah 
So we have to keep in mind we are thinking about combustion and combustion is about burning fuels okay and we want to identify uh, but, but then the reaction that we took was something very algebraically general okay something like sigma i equals 1 to capital N uh, Ni single prime script Mi gives sigma i equals 1 to capital M uh, capital N Ni double prime script Mi. What was the fuel there? How was it getting oxidized? How do you know which is the fuel? How do you know which is the oxidizer? So we have this question okay. So we wanted to be able to tell a fuel when you see it. How do you do this? What are we looking for when we burn? What happens when, when you burn a fuel? It releases heat so how, how do you feel it? It is pretty hot okay. So we are basically looking for a fairly high value of T adiabatic. Huh? What are the typical values of T adiabatic? Any idea? Oh, forget about T adiabatic we do not even know whether you, you are having heat loss to the surroundings or not in the flames that you normally encounter okay. But uh, can you guess whatever is the temperature that, in, that, that, you, that, you, that you have in the flames that you encounter? Let us just take an example of the flame that you encounter. Example, let us let, let's pick, a, pick a flame that you encounter. Any, anything? I do not even know what the premix flame is. This is just a second class or third class. Huh? I want to talk about something that I encounter. Candle flame, so you, you now burn a candle. Okay. What do you think is the temperature there? Like the peak temperature anywhere inside the candle flame? Ballpark figure. Are we looking at um, a few degrees Celsius or tens of degrees of Celsius, hundreds of degrees of Celsius, thousands of degrees of Celsius or ten thousands? I am going on a logarithmic scale. What are we talking about? Right? A, a few degrees Celsius is just, just barely more than ice. <laughs> Obviously, it is not, it's not that cold. Okay, a few tens of degrees is basically just barely more than body temperature or around body temperature but when I touch it it is pretty hot. Huh? So well, of course I, mean, I cannot touch anything more than about 70, 80 degrees I am going to get burned. <laughs> okay, the, the human body is so fragile huh? you cannot dip your finger into boiling water which is 100 degrees C. <laughs> so we are not even talking about getting touching a flame. That means I guess the temperature is now grading greater than 100 degrees C, right? So is it hundreds or even worse, thousands, thousands? So you light up a candle and you can get a temp. Forget you don't even have to light up a candle. If you have to light up a candle, you have to strike a matchstick. You strike a matchstick, okay, and you get a little fire there. That flame is actually going to have a temperature that's of the order of 2,000 Kelvin. 2000 to 3000 it's so hot okay but if you're if you're into plasma physics and so on it's only the, only so hot <laughs> depends depends on what kind of person you are okay but but we are talking about temperatures that are of the order of 2000 2000 c 2000 k doesn't matter what, what, when you're in, when you're in 2000 whether it is c or k okay is, is a matter of <laughs> the same order huh? okay so that's what we are looking at if you want to get that high a temperature here that means the sensible enthalpy has to be high okay. If your sensible enthalpy has to be high the heat of formation here has to be low that is the reason why we said a stoichiometric mixture is the one where the products will have the highest negative heats of formation. So now we are getting back to why we were talking about that okay. So we want to have products that have the highest negative values here so that this will be high to compensate and get you the total and then we have to look at the total. The total will be given by the right hand side okay. So the right hand side is already a given you take a particular mixture of certain comp composition of methane and oxygen let us say okay the right hand side is fixed 
at a particular pressure and temperature you take everything okay temperature pressure composition these the species everything this right hand side is fixed then how do I know that I am actually working with a fuel and not some garbage that means how do I know that methane is actually going to work like a fuel that means I want to have a high total to begin with that this gives you the right hand side should be a fairly high total and keep in mind T1 is not going to be very high for you you do not want to actually heat up methane to 2000 Kelvin and then burn to get a carbon dioxide and water at 2000 Kelvin does not make sense. So what is our methane at room temperature okay so room temperature is like okay 298 Kelvin let us say okay if you are not talking about a fairly low sensible enthalpy how is it possible for us to now have a very high total of the sensible enthalpy and the heat of formation together only if you have very high heat of formation for the reactant okay now if you have methane and oxygen oxygen is not going to contribute to your standard heat of formation at all because it is it is a reference element and then therefore we take it as 0 okay. So the only way you are going to make sure that your T adiabatic is high is if you work with a particular species which gave you a very high standard heat of formation. So you now look at a species and find that it has a high, high standard heat of formation you know it is a fuel you see that is really the catch you get that and then you can burn and you can get very high temperatures and that is the equation that tells you how to do, do this right. So this, this pretty much contains like a lot of information about combustion which is very very interesting okay. The second question that I have is I can give you Ni single prime all right do I know Ni double prime what is that it means if I took a certain composition of reactants how do I know what, what would be the composition of the products is it straightforward see you Thursday. <laughs>